Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Scott with Killer Minis Painting and Gaming. We're going to paint up a Reaper Paladin. Make sure you're subscribed, dude. Of course, we're going to start things off with a base coat. And we're going to start with pure black. So now, if you've watched my other two videos leading through this series, I covered a little bit of washing the model. I've also covered doing some flash removal and some trimming, some model preparation. This time I skipped it. It's our third model in the kit. We should know what to do by now. So here we're just painting the underside of the shield of black. Um, and then here we're coming in with a blade steel. Now this particular model has a lot of metal. It's almost a full, like, full body suit of armor. Um, and if you get this kit and you go to paint this, you're going to notice that the metallics in this kit are the weakest item in the overall kit. It is literally the only paint I would not recommend. Um, and here I am painting everything that's metal on his armor with this blade steel. And let me tell you, I had a, <laughs> it was very thin. It was very translucent. I couldn't get it to stick. Um, I'm not sure if maybe I didn't wash it well enough, but this model behaved completely differently from the other two models that I painted without a prime coat. It was just seemed like I always had too much water in the base coat. It was rough. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact of, of this metallic paint. Um, it's widely known that their metallics are a little weak. Everything else in this kit, 100% recommend it. Um, maybe the brushes are a little, could be better, but still. Um, this metallic paint was just, it was bad news. I, now that being said, I was still able to get it to work. I just had to fight it. And I fought it. And I fought it. We're, you know, it I think this base coat took me about 45 minutes to an hour to finally lay down. Um, so why am I telling you this? Well, if you haven't bought the kit yet and done this model, or if you have bought it, but you're planning to do the model, you might want to invest in another metallic paint. For the most part, pretty much any other metallic paint other than craft paint would probably be better than this. Um, but if, if you're bound and determined to use this one, um, so be it. Now, here actually I was having some clogs, and I just went ahead and used a hand drill, and I just drilled the nozzle straight out. Um, I'm going to do a video here in the future uh, showing you how to do that. There's some dragon blue. I was somewhat happy with the metallic base that I put down, and now we're going to do... Um, I don't want to call it a skirt, but it's the robes of his armor. And this is actually looking a lot more purple than it is blue. Not sure why. My camera's not the best in the world. Messed around with the white balance, but in the end, I maybe because of the green background, this is about as accurate as it's going to be, and it's a little purple. But trust me, it's just as blue as it looked like in the bottle. Um, so, yeah. So here we're just going to go ahead and put that. All, mostly in the bottom portion is where his armor, the robes of his armor pop out. And also up here in the arms as well. Just a little bit poking out. It's kind of hard to tell when you look at the arms, like what's what. Um, you can use my final model as reference. And also I used, um, I used the picture from the instructions. And so here we're doing the shield. It's going to be a blue to match the robe. And it's kind of a classic color combination. That's why it, it works so well in the, in the finished product. Um, you know, basically silver and like a royal blue, a light royal blue. It always looks good. It's a good color combo. So like I said, it looks a little paint. Here I switched to uh, Army Painter Metal the equivalent of what we were using before to basically go over what this was uh, already. And immediately, as soon as I put it on, I'm like, oh my God, here we go. It's nice and smooth. It's covering. It's acting properly. It's just a world of difference. 
it took me an hour to put the base coat down and it took me about five minutes to put a, a real paint on in the almost exact same spots. So it's a little hard to tell on camera because, well, it's metallic paint. It's always tough to get the realistic view of that, but um, definitely noticeable when you're with the human eye and you're painting it for sure. So went ahead and did the shield. I'm going to, I'm touching up a little bit of the uh, little daggers in the front with some of that uh, silver. And then I went ahead and used the good stuff that was still on the palette. And I'm just touching it up a little bit. Still on these base coats. The base coat on this, I'll, I'll because of the problem I had with the, the paint sticking and then the poor quality paint, it took me forever. It literally was three quarters of the model. Here's Harvest Brown. And we are going to just paint a very small section of fur that's sticking out from his armor, mostly in his shoulder pauldrons, I guess. And as you can see, there's only a little bit of fur sticking out, but it's an important thing for you to learn as a new painter because even the small details like that, if it's a perimeter, if it's something that separates one thing from another, that's something that you can break detail out of if you get contrast. So you got silver and like a dark brown and then that blue and some more silver. So you can see it, it kind of outlines the area. And so it, it, it brings the shoulder and the upper portion of the model to view. And I went ahead and went a little crazy on the leg with it. And later on, I, I painted back over it with metal because it just didn't look right. I had a hard time telling what to do. So here's leather brown, and we're just going to go over all the leather bits, kind of like we did with the previous model. Um, and actually, I had a problem with this sticking, too. And like I said, I don't think I washed this model properly, maybe. Because I was not getting a good experience if I was going straight to the plastic. And almost every color I used, the leather brown was giving me fits. And this one actually, well, maybe that's later. I had a little bit of blue into it. And it was during the dry brush. You'll see what I do there. But there's some leather strapping on the back of the dagger. His gauntlets or his fists. Working on those. And the little... Uh, weapon sheath in the front there and he's got a little strap that connects to that weapon sheath that was giving me fits as well i could not seem to get coverage of my color so here we're going to the polished silver and for some reason i decided to grab the reaper and then i said no screw that i'm doing the shining silver from army painter <laughs> so um i'm gonna do another video on paints that i recommend for a new painter and you know, it honestly, it's a tie between Reaper and Army Painter, but there's some positives that the Army Painter has that Reaper doesn't. One is cost and availability and ease. Um, but so here's the finished base coat. Just so you get a good spin of it. I slowed it down a little bit. And it's it's quite shiny, obviously. We're going to come back in and break, knock that down with a wash. But it would not have looked like that with the Reaper. So here we're using the Mar uh, Mountain Stone. And we're going to, oh, I thought I was done with the base coat. No, I have to do the base. So anyhow, we'll do it. We'll do a paint video. But my recommendation really is if you're going to invest heavily in a line, not just a small kit like this, but if you want to, you know, like 30, 40, 50 paints, it's definitely going to be Army Painter um, for sure. I'll do a full length video. Um, check out your little eye up above. Um It'll, it's not available now, but if you're watching this in the future, it will be. <laughs> so here we're using the dragon blue and the pure black. And we're going to mix this. I believe it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And we're just trying to get uh, a nice dark wash. We didn't want it to be pure black, so that's why the blue's in there. But this is going to go over all of the, the blue that we previously base coated. And again, it's looking very purple. And remember, when you put something like a wash on, it looks like, oh my God, I've, you know, I've changed the entire surface, its color. But when it dries, it will look different. And you're only going to see that, that dark opacity, mostly in the shadows where it pools and it collects. All the pigments kind of come together and, and have a little party. So continuing on the wash. Um, 
I, this is a second coat after the first one dried. So yeah, second coat here. And it went ahead and hit the arms again. Trying to get this armor coat looking the way I wanted it to look. So I was happy with that, so I went ahead and started on the shield. Um, here you're going to see I'm using a technique where I'm flipping the model upside down. And what that's going to do is allow this really thin liquid or the wash to accumulate in the upper little ridge line of that shield trim. That's kind of what I was going for. And then I came back and I hit the bottom. Um, you can experiment with that sometimes. In, in this case, I probably should have held it upside down a little longer, but I was doing a video. So then we go ahead and hit the sword with a wash as well. And this, uh, the little bit of blue really worked well for that. It kind of gave it a blue steel look. So here is a brown. This is more of a, a ready, uh, the red brown. I forget the name of it again. Um, and we're going to hit the gauntlets with that. Harvest Brown is the name of it. So it's really kind of a brown ochre. So pretty much everything we painted light brown earlier, we're coming back with a Harvest Brown wash. Remember with these washes, everything's about six or seven drops to one drop of paint. Nice and fluid is what you're looking for. And all the leather straps. Then we're coming back with the rest of the model, I believe, on all the armor, and we're going to just make a black wash. So I put a couple drops in the palette, six, seven, eight, nine drops of water, get the right feeling. You can see my paper towel there. When the paint spreads out like it did there, when it blooms, that's when it's a good wash. And here I'm holding it upside down. I'm trying to get those upper cracks. And quite honestly, as much as I did this upside down and as hard as for you to see video quality wise, it's not a good videographer selection, but. To, to make matters worse, it didn't really pay off. I would have needed to hold it upside down for a much longer time. So pretty much going over the entire model, and I'm bringing that original brightness way, way down. And you have to keep that in mind when you're if you completely wash the entire surface of a particular area, you're going to bring it down. And what that means is next, after your wash, is you're going to bring it right back up. Generally, you'll reapply the base coat. We're going to do that with a dry brush. Um, most applications, are, you're going to go back in and hand paint it. But So I went ahead and did the base as well and threw in the black wash in that area too. So it's going to bring in all the nooks and crannies. And here, for some reason, I'm grabbing that silver again. Nope, nope, I'm going to go back to the army painter. <laughs> I keep trying to push it. We're going to start our dry brushing, uh, dry brushing phase now. And... I've got the Citadel small dry brush, which I really like. And it really allows me to go in there with a lot of accuracy and get the tiniest little edges. You don't want to, you don't want to be hitting everything. And I went and used a, a brighter metal than I used before. I believe it's a plate mail. And yeah, you can see it's really going to come to life. It's going to bring back that original color and then also kind of do a bit of an extreme highlight and some of the rivets and yeah I think I wasn't expecting it was going to look as good as it, it kind of turned out but that's how it is sometimes you have to understand that if you're new to painting or you haven't painted that much there's an old saying it has to look like crap before it looks good and it's really true because you just have to work on it and you have to understand it's part of the process so here I'm showing those two paints again <laughs> Um, and I'm going with the, the brighter army painter that like, likes to paint good pigments, good coverage. And I'm getting a nice edge on the sword. And I'm going to go ahead and use that as well as like a second highlight to some of the very small areas. You can see I'm not putting it everywhere, just in select spots and focused a lot on the face there. Um, dragon blue is next and we're going to basically dry brush the original base coat color back on since we brought it all down with that wash. It kind of seems counterintuitive, but trust me, once you do it a few times, it's it's kind of the tried and true 
method, you know, you put on the base coat, you bring it down, you bring it back up and then you kind of go, it's the back and forth that you do trying to get all of your highlights the way you want them. So here I'm hitting the armor robes, bringing that original color back up, but you can still see in the shadows, I got that nice dark color from the wash. It's still a lot more blue than it's showing here on film. It's actually, um, the highest points are much more like my dry brush text on the bottom of the screen. Now I slowed that down so you could still see the paint coming off the brush. I used the same brush and this was a mistake. So now I go to this light brown and what do you think happens when you take blue and mix it with light brown? Well, it turned my hands basically green because <laughs> that light brown's got a green in it. So I had to fix that off camera and later on I grabbed, I used quite a few different dry brushes. So now we're going to go ahead and dry brush, bring the base color back up with that mountain stone onto the base. Because remember, the black kind of knocked it back. So dragon blue and white. This is a one drop to one drop ratio. One drop of white, one drop of blue. And this is going to be an extreme highlight for our armor robes. And again, that small dry brush, I'm just hitting the very raised edges. And then especially the pleats here on, I want to call it the cape, but it's the armor robes. And hopefully you can really see, it still looks kind of purple, but hopefully it comes out a little better for you. It's starting to look a bit more blue now that it's getting lighter in intensity. And it really looks good when I was done with that. I was quite happy. You'd be amazed what you can do with a, with a good dry brush. So back to the light brown. And this is a highlight for the fur. Because remember, we put down harvest brown, which is a, a dark, ready brown. And now this is your, your light, yellowy brown. That's going to be a highlight for the fur. Two small trim pieces, really, underneath the shoulder arms. And actually, I, had a, uh, I used it in some other spots, too, where the leather was. Um, it didn't really work well. I had it off camera. I fixed it. Mountain stone and desert sand. So I believe this is for the base. So the desert sand is just going to bring that mountain stone up. White would be too strong. And this keeps it earth, earthy feeling because it's a khaki feel. Use this sparingly. Otherwise, you're just going to turn it into the color that we're applying. You have to be careful with these final highlights. So then we hit the pure black. So with this final black... We are going to create a wash, but not with seven or eight drops, more like three or four. Make it a little thicker, and we're going to drop it into the face mask of that armor. Then we're also going to pick a few spots on the armor that, in the crevices that the wash didn't really get to. And it, it looks pretty good. And really anywhere I want to edge in some black. You can see this is the final detail work. We're done with all of our dry brushing. And I had to come in and put a little bit of metallic and fix up those daggers that gave me fits the whole model. And that's pretty much it. Um, here's the final model. I'm giving you like a nice slow spin. And even though it was a bit of a pain, um, I was happy with the end result. So, yeah, I mean, this is attainable. It was quite easy other than the issues I had with the prime. But um, I, like I said, I think it was my fault I didn't wash it properly. So don't be afraid. Just pick this kit up, 30 bucks, knock it out yourself. And, you know, feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know how it went. Uh, maybe drop some pictures onto my Facebook for Killer Minty, uh, Killer Minis, painting and gaming. And uh, feel free to drop some photos. Let me know how it went. So till next time, guys, this is a blast. I hope you're enjoying it. Make sure you're subscribed, dude. Peace out.